Hi, I'm Gagan Kapoor. I'm a marketing consultant. And today I am at Burji Supertech uh, Industries Limited. And uh, I am with uh, Mr. K.S. Burji, who is the pioneer director of uh, uh, Burji Supertech, who pioneered this particular, who had a vision and pioneered this particular initiative way back in 1969. And, uh, uh, and followed by, uh, uh, after being joined by uh, his uncle uh, in 1973, uh, took the industry uh, in a very, very appreciative manner and have taken uh, the, the business to a much, much evolved state at this point of time. In 2024, now we see today, uh, they have come a long way. And uh, I want to talk today to uh, uh, Mr. Burji. Hello, sir. Hello. Um. Right. So, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, uh, what is your vision for the industry and uh, uh, how do you see it evolving? As far as the tooling industry is concerned, there is a very big scope. You know, as the manufacturing industry is uh, growing very fast uh, in many sectors like automotive, EVs, electrical vehicles, then domestic appliances, aerospace, medical, and so is the tooling. Tooling plays a very, very important role in, in any industry. Without tooling, no industry can grow or survive. So, uh, Mr. Bhuji, uh, if uh, tooling is becoming at the heart of uh, the current uh, uh, changes which are happening in the manufacturing industry, uh, uh, would you also like to highlight uh, some of the trends which are now coming in uh, in the industry? As uh, you know, after the COVID, tooling industry has shifted to, to India, in our country. Uh, a lot of demand has been created after the COVID because now nobody wants to go to the China for that tooling industries. So we, we, we need to have a very good infrastructure for tooling development and like skilled labor, high speed, high technology machines, which are required. They are a bit expensive, but if we have to face the challenge of the very competitive market of China, we have to have these machines and these kind of technologies skilled people skilled people so uh, you spoke about some challenges which are uh, there in the industry still because india is now being seen as one big region where the manufacturing can happen india make in india is becoming very big these days but i believe that uh, uh, and being an industrialist for such a long time you uh, must be coming across some of the challenges which you see every day uh, what could be some of these challenges which the industry is facing at this point? I think uh, as the tooling industry is growing, uh, we, we have to compete with the, our counterpart that is the China. Because we have to compete with them. They are cheaper than us. And for that, we need to have a lot of infrastructure in India, like availability of special steel off the shelf, as our counterpart in China they have. Availability of accessories, mode bases, uh, it takes around 30 to 40 days for these product to reach our factory. So to, to save times, we have these kind of facilities available near to our manufacturing. And uh, what is your uh, view on uh, uh, labor uh, in terms of skilling as well as uh, technology? Do you think uh, there is a uh, growth required? and? What kind of support you look at from the government? As far as the labor is concerned, uh, the availability of highly skilled labor is still is not available. Then the machines, we, we have to have very high end machines with the high speed, high cutting speeds, high cutting fields to match our quality and the timeline with our counterpart in China. And then we, we should have the support from the government. They should have some, some cluster where this tooling industry is concentrated so we can get everything done at the nearest place. As our counterpart in China, they have the cluster for every industry, for the machining, for tooling, everything that is available in, under I mean, one industrial state. So if you go to the Taizhou in China, you can get any type of steel within a kilometer or within a few yards. That saves a lot of time plus availability of high-end machines. They are very expensive in India. To get the tooling faster, we have to have very high-speed, high-feed rate machines 
which was very very expensive in india the cost of them is very high, which was very cheap in china but if we we can afford those kind of machines so the problem is that that kind of service is also not available here and we should have the some some government support also to have those those kind of machines and those kind of i mean infrastructure is required and i also believe that uh, because of this uh, we also need to have a lot of uh, supply chain uh, refinement within the industry as well because if the supply chain is better we if we can reduce time in this overall process not only our uh, uh, cost is going to go down with efficient supply chain and skilled labor uh, and easy availability of these uh, uh, materials uh, with uh, certain uh, government incentives uh, we can actually uh, do better in terms of the cost efficiencies which can actually help us uh, uh, compete with uh, the the bigger markets uh, which are really really uh, taking a toll on our uh, uh, systems yes there is a need of uh, supply chain infrastructure in our country because we have to have the special mold steel we normally we have to get it from bombay or chennai and it takes minimum 10 to 15 days that increases our lead time even the other mold accessories even the hot runner mold which is very important part of the mold measurement we have to import that takes a month or more so that way we cannot compete in time and the cost also so we should have infrastructure very near to the uh, tooling cluster developed by the government i think that is what is required that government can set up these kind of facilities which and and Uh, increase these kind of uh, infrastructure around the industrial areas which can actually support uh, all our uh, tooling partners uh, sir now my next question to you at this point is uh, you have spoken about the industry you have spoken about some of the challenges which are there in the industry uh, and uh, what do you think and uh, how do you think any new manufacturer who is looking at a tooling partner uh, what can be Uh, or what should be the factors which one manufacturer should look at in an ideal tooling partner the first thing one should look for the tooling partner is the integrity of that partner because in the steel the same with the similar specification of steel from a different manufacturer from the international is maybe 400 rupees and if you get the same steel from the some chinese supplier it is 150 if you go by the specifications the international specification of the steel they can match but the quality of the the mold is not as good as that that is the where the integrity of the partner is required after the integrity then the technical expertise of the the partner the one is they should be capable of doing the very good mold designs they should have the team of the designer but they should they should be able to select good steels good hot turner system and other accessories also should be very high end to get the maximum uh, the quality from the tools then the design capability we have already discussed and good infrastructure is also required to have good machines tooling systems also like uh, cutters high end cutters and then we have to very good cad cam system to match with those machines with these these things the expert people also who can handle those machines which are very scarce in india these are required and there are some in the mid with the tooling some changes are suggested by our clients and one should be flexible to incorporate those changes because these are necessary during development of any product that is where the flexibility is also flexibility of the your tooling partners is required and calling to be the last is uh, after sales support also if our client have any problem while using the tool we should be able to support it So, uh, uh, so Mr. Bhuji, uh, with all of these advancements which are happening in the industry, challenges which are being faced in the industry, how is BSIL preparing for it, or have prepared for it, and uh, how are you evolving? Uh, if we have to remain in the this competitive tooling market, we have to keep ourselves upgrading. The first up, first part of the upgradation is the mold design. Mold design requires very good cat cam to design that molds very skilled people they can design it you should have we have the mold flow analysis which are, which are, we have bought this software where we can simulate the 
end component before the even the mold is started to the accuracy of uh, 90% aesthetically. Of course, uh, dimensionally it has to be, it will be 100%, but we have to do it aesthetically. It will be, it should not be no, no shrinkage, no marks, no flow mark. For that, we have to have a very nice mold flow analysis. Then we have to, then, then comes the machining. In machining, we are upgrading our machines. We are keep, keeping separate machines for rough machining. And the finished machining, it has to be very accurate and very high speed to save the manual work. The more manual work you do, it will cost you more and the cost and the quality of the mold will deteriorate further. So the best part in the international the practice is to have most of the things on, done on EDM, uh, I mean very high speed EDMs and very high speed machinings where very less manual work is required to do it. After that, uh, we need to have this, uh, um, so many drill machines, radio drill machine to, to drill the cooling channels. But now we are also buying gun drilling machine, which is expensive. So where maybe we can do very quickly, very fast, maybe 5-10% the time taken, and the accuracy will be much better. Then required is the die spotting. So we have already installed 100 ton die spot, First we used to do was the manual with the hammers. So with that, we get a lot of uh, clean molds. You don't have to put hammers on the molds. And the quality of that matching is very good. A crux of this, the total trade is, the more you save on the manual, the better you get the quality and the better cost you can get it. And the better, better you can save a lot of time on the. It is the manual works with it takes a lot of time. So this was uh, Mr. K. S. Burji for you, who was the director, who is the director of Burji Supertech, and he spoke about how the industry is evolving. There are several challenges which are there in the industry, but yes, as the challenges are there, the uh, the country is definitely growing and warming up towards finding solutions on how we can make manufacturing more seamless within uh, our country. And uh, and yes, as I see and as I hear from uh, Mr. Burji. Uh, BSIL, Burji Supertech Industries Limited, is certainly preparing and has prepared itself uh, with the evolution, with the, uh, uh, taking on new technology, with taking on new machinery, uh, making sure that the manual systems are turning automatic. All of these processes are certainly making BSIL a place where any good company, any good industry which is looking at manufacturing and high speed manufacturing with efficiency, with precision, with technology, they can look at BSIL as their destination to get this kind of manufacturing done. And we are pretty confident that we can deliver one of the best in class materials, state of the art material uh, for the industry to function efficiently. Thank you so much. Thank you.